Hi, everybody. My name is John DePietro. And I'm Bob Zagami with the Camper Report Show. Bob, I am going to talk to a world-renowned travel writer, and he's going to talk about what he knows about the expanding world of RVing. How about you? Got a double header tonight. I've got Jessica Ryder and Susan Carpenter of the RV Women's Alliance and some exciting news. And they're actually one of the exhibitors here at the RVDA convention in Las Vegas this week. And you're going to tell us all about what's going on in Las Vegas. And I'm looking forward to it because um, it's going to be a great event that you're at. Yep. Great time. All of it right here on the Camper Report Show. Stay with us, everybody. And welcome back to the Camp Report Show. My name is John DePietro. This is the time that we give you all the news. Bob Zagami is in Las Vegas. I'm in Massachusetts. But Bob has the news direct from the show floor at the big convention that you're at in Las Vegas. Bob, tell us about that convention and what's going on. Well, this is the most important week of the year for dealers and uh, suppliers and vendors that work through the dealers. We're at the Paris Hotel here in Las Vegas as uh, we missed it for two years. We're back here live and in person. And there's a tremendous air of excitement, not only in the RVDA convention, but in Las Vegas in general. I can tell you, Las Vegas is back. You, you go out on the streets and it's a fun time and it's a fun town and people are having a great time. And we're sitting here inside the Paris and doing our work and doing our business. The, uh, the convention is something very special to dealers. The best dealers in the country are here. Now, a lot of the dealers, because the event didn't take place last year, obviously, because of COVID, um, the industry has just gone crazy. Is that yeah, pro that's, proper, that's proper characterization? Yeah, yeah, it, it has. And quite honestly, the consumers understand that, too, that, you know, there's been the shortage of inventory. There's been some quality issues. There's been some supplier issues. So uh, as well as the industry has done financially in terms of record profits and record revenue sales, record unit sales, there that comes along with some challenges that the pandemic brought on the industry that people didn't see coming. There was just no way. The cargo ships in the harbor in LA are, are one example. So it's even more important that the dealers make the investment to come to this convention because the major portion of it is education. The majority of time is spent in classrooms, in workshops, talking about things that are going to help them improve the customer experience, improve their own bottom line, and learn about new technologies and new systems that are going to make them more efficient. So the, the beneficiary of all of this and the, and the amount of time and money that is spent here this week is going to be the consumers. Mm -hmm. They're going to be smarter dealers. They're going to be more efficient dealers. And as I say, my, for my money, this is the most important week of the year for any RV dealer in the country. They should all be here. Right. Now, we should say that this is a trade-only event, so the general public is not there. But as you say, the dealers, the manufacturers, the suppliers, they're all kind of getting together trying to figure out how do we deal not with how to get sales back up, but how to handle the current backload. And, you know, the big three, uh, Thor, Forest River and Winnebago, all have billions, that's with a B, billions of dollars in backload, back ordered product. And um, you know what? They got to get it out there for the public to buy. Yep. And you know, the other thing too, is this, this association, the RVDA national is run by volunteer dealers, the board of directors, every state has a delegate. And uh, this past year, just finishing up today, Chris Andro from Hemlock Hill RV in Connecticut has just done a masterful job this year, bringing them back to a live conference, uh, a great team of people. And, and one thing that was that I really enjoyed noticing this one, and pardon me for reading, but I, I just have to have it in front of me. Chris is the outgoing chairman of the RVDA. Incoming is Mike Pirro with Hilltop Camper and RV in Fridley, Minnesota. First vice chair is Nathan Hart, Walnut Ridge Family RV Sales in Newcastle, Indiana. Ryan Horsey, second generation, I think maybe third generation, Parkview RV Center in Smyrna, Delaware. Bob Cox from Stolfitz RV in Westchester is the treasurer. 
And the secretary is John Ferrando, who is the president and CEO of RV Retailer. And they all, now these are some powerful people, multiple generations. So what we're seeing here is the next generation and it's a younger generation. For us more mature people that have been in the industry for years and years, when they put that slide up, it, it, it had a great message to it that it's a changing of the guard. It's a much younger board that's coming in. They're gonna have new ideas. They're gonna have new agenda items that they want. So it's gonna be a very exciting time for dealers. And again, these dealers, let's face it, the consumers all have their favorite dealers and hopefully they're here, but they're gonna be the recipient of what is uh, broadcast to them this week. Great. So that's the story from Las Vegas. And we wanna say thank you for joining us. We've got a great show lined up right now, right here, where Bob? The Camry Port Show, live from the Paris Hotel in Las Vegas. Stay with us, everybody. I'm Jesse from Outsiders Calling, and I love adventurous family travel with my wife, Jenny, and our son, Tucker. For over three years, we've RV'd across the U.S. and Mexico, and it's tough to find places that meet all our needs. Now, we plan our trips with the RV Trip Wizard, pull it up in the RV Life app, select it, and go. It helps us discover amazing new places to grow together as a family. RV Trip Wizard with the RV Life app is an awesome trip planning combination. You can get both for one low annual price. Check out rvlife.com to learn more. All right, welcome back to the Camper Report Show, everybody. And my guest today is Susan Carpenter, president of the RV Women's Alliance, and Jessica Ryder, the managing director. And we are sitting in the middle of a large, loud hall here in Las Vegas at the RV Dealer Association Convention and Expo. Ladies, tell us what's new with the RVWA, and are you having fun yet? Oh, I think we're having a lot of fun. We're a lot of and fun. to say what's new, well, Bob, I don't think your show has enough time for that. Oh. We have so <laughs> many things. Um, but one of the thing that, things that we are most excited about for the coming year is our career highway. We are have been very big advocates of getting more people into the RV industry since our inception in 2019. And our RV career highway has really taken off and it's going to go even further in 2022. Well, you know, you know, Susan, the, in, in the industry today, in the business world today, there's a lot of people talking about they don't want to go back to 10 by 10 cubicles, they don't want to go back to big companies, and there's yep. a lot of people looking for alternative careers. And yeah. if ever there was somebody positioned for it, I'd say it's the RV industry. The RV industry. I've been in this industry for a very long time. And, you know, it may seem like a big industry, but it's really a small industry with a very small networking group of people. It's a fantastic place to have a career because it is like family. And everything that you do is about relationship building and getting to know each other. It's not a hard sell. And, you know, you're building a career in giving somebody experiences. So anything RV throughout the country is about going out into the great outdoors and having family experiences and doing something and networking. So it's not your hard, you know, back and forth, um, you know, sitting behind a desk and just punching numbers that mean nothing. This means something to somebody. You know, in our show, this show is, is pretty much consumer focused. And consumers have just been blasted the last, you know, since COVID about all the benefits of an RV. So the, the companies are growing, the products are varied. We have many different types of people using it. So what types of careers might people find if they decide to go looking and, and how do they find the network? Well, one of the biggest careers I think that people are, can find is marketing. You can do marketing really anywhere. Um, that is something that's great. I know one of our um, members recently spoke about um, customer service for her organization. They look for somebody that can, you know, come to their location and, and do some training, but that person can then travel the U.S. and take phone calls. They just need to be in a, in a place that has great service, great cell service. So doing customer service, doing marketing, helping with social media, helping with, um, you know, doing some, some parts, ordering and, and, and purchasing. Yeah. Sometimes those things can be remote. And the great thing about is when you're in this industry, you're talking to people that are out on the road, they're traveling, they have great stories. So, you know, if you're one of those people that like to connect with people, what a great industry to be in. Because when you're talking to them, whether they're frustrated or they're happy, 
you know, um, they're telling you a story about what they're doing. They went to Maine, they went to Florida, and this happened, and you know, I'm enjoying my trip, and it's just a lot of fun. It, it's just not your cookie cutter industry. Well, I, I think you're right. That's the one thing when any anybody ever talks about the RV industry or different aspects of it, whether it's manufacturing or marketing or supplier end of it, everybody comes back to the same word. It's fun. It's, it's, a, fun. it's a fun business and you're working yeah. with fun people. Yeah. Let's go back in time a little bit, Susan, because you, you <laughs> started this well, RV Women's go. Alliance. Yeah. Did you ever think that in just two short years you would have the position in the industry, the, the group itself, that you share now and the excitement around it? No, I don't think, I mean, we knew we had something. We just didn't know exactly what it was. And it's really kind of exploded because I think there was a need. There's, there's been a lot of women involved in this industry that never had that networking capability to meet other women and to make it a very comfortable, safe, um, welcoming industry for them. And so through this organization, what one of our main purposes purposes is, is to bring more women into this industry and show them how great it is and to have our community of RBWA as mentors and you know somewhat like family you know somebody you can talk to and you know work through anything that you may have problems with. And, and Jessica when you look at it and we say industry for the consumers that are watching that may not know about the, they know RVs they see them going down the highway but they may not understand it's a multi-billion dollar industry with a tremendous impact on the gross domestic product. What, talk about the different levels, the different categories that we use in the industry between manufacturers and suppliers and what people would find in those types of companies. Yeah, so I think the great thing, um, we've recently been talking about this is, when you think of an RV, you know, it's kind of at the center of a lot of things that go into that and there's, a so many different things and you're absolutely right Bob most people don't understand all the different hands and players that come into just making that RV that you weekend camp in or full-time RV and live in um, so there's many different aspects you can you could work for a manufacturer you could work for an aftermarket supplier you could work for a distributor um, you dealerships, dealerships you could campgrounds. campgrounds I mean there's so many different levels that you could work associations are a part of it media is a part of it so there's there's many different things that actually go into making that one RV um, and each if consumers don't know the manufacturer doesn't make everything on that RV so if you think if you just step into your RV and you look at everything that's in there most everything in there comes from somebody else if you just look at your microwave there's a different name on it than the name on your RV so think about that and think about all the different things that you know the different companies that you could work for yeah yep. and they're all across North America yes. they're not just central and you know no. a lot of people talk about Elkhart Indiana but that's not true you know a lot of the manufacturing is there but it's throughout the country and all these suppliers that come together the campgrounds the distributors the dealers all across North America. Yeah. I mean, even going back to the transport companies themselves. So yes, somebody makes it and you yes. know 84% of them are made in Elkhart. Well, they have to get to a dealer. And how do they get to the dealer? Yeah. Usually one at a time, unless it's a small yes. trailer. Yeah. So, so maybe there's over the road truck drivers that don't want a, that grueling with a, a tight of, deadlines yep. and, and wa wondering if there'll be a, a shortage of shipments or the cargo ship doesn't get unloaded. Yep. They don't get afraid. There's, there's always something leaving Elkhart for someplace there's else. There's always someplace well, going somewhere. And there's always something coming back to Elkhart as well for warranty work, for repairs or whatever. So you get that both ways. And you're absolutely right, Bob. Um, I've read something recently. A lot of truckers, they don't even want to, to deal with the ports. So they're right. turning away from that business because it's it's an all-day affair just trying to get a, a, a load out of the port. So, yeah, this is a great opportunity for for anybody in the trucking industry that, that you know, just wants to call campers back and yeah. forth. I mean, this industry is on fire right now, yes. thanks to COVID. But, I yes. mean, we were doing very well before COVID, but there are more positions than there are people to, to fill them. And if you talk to anybody new that came into this industry and they're like, oh my God, I never knew this industry existed. I love working for this industry because it is more about just pushing numbers or something else like that. It's a lifestyle. And, and with COVID, which certainly helped, 
when you look at the industry and the numbers, we're up 100, 200 percent. Some companies are 300 percent, and we're on a growth curve. So when people look at it and say, "Well, there's a shortage and the products aren't going to get to Amazon or Walmart," we have people waiting in line. We have dealers that are waiting for inventory. You have you have to buy it when you see it now. Yeah. And that trend, depending on which analyst you want to talk to, we're talking a, a ride of maybe five or ten years. This is not jump into an industry, and we've seen this before. They yeah. take a new job, and the next week they they lay off 400 Tanks. people, yeah. and nobody has it. No, even even you know we've been on such a, a, a steep incline. Even when we correct ourselves to pre-COVID times, the industry was, was still amazing, and it was going strong, and it's going to continue to grow strong because people are out there enjoying the great outdoors. Well, and I think one of the drivers, even before we found out what COVID was, but when you think back to the last recession, we lost a lot of manufacturers, we lost a lot of dealers. But the industry also got very smart about expanding their base. Yeah. So when I do my seminars, I say, now look at, we have an RV for everybody, yeah. whether it's a tent camper for $10,000 yeah. or a $2 million bus. But interesting enough, within those categories, whether it's a fifth wheel or a towable or a class A motorhome, we have a, a good, better, best. We have, you know, a, an entry-level product. We have a, a good range product for the average buyer. And we have luxury products if they want it. So when you when you take that matrix and say, we, we've got all these people from millennials on up to retirees, and then across the board, we got all these different categories. And then within that, we got so many product selections. We, we even have women out there doing it themselves, not yeah. even buying fam, not even with families. They're, yep. they're women on their own, going out and camping on their own and pulling RVs and, 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 and having a time of their lives. And there's women RV techs across yep. the U.S. that are traveling in their RVs and they land in a campground and they say, I have four openings. Right. Who and needs work done on their RV? Yeah. And they end up with 12. And they have tw people, you know, uh, 20, 20 people come or whatever. But yeah. But that's a great option for somebody that's, you know, looking to stay to travel and looking to, you know, yeah, just do something on the side. That's RV Texas is great. Yeah, and when we talk dealership. talk about the career pathway, because when people look at things like this and say, Oh yeah, come to this industry, we, we have people on the production floor. Mm -hmm. And guess what guys? We have CEOs that yeah. have st either started a company or have ascended yeah. to a C-level suite in this country. So we're talking all different jobs. Everything. Every, I mean, everybody is looking for help in any capacity in this industry. And it's just because we're, we've grown so big and um, there's just a shortage of people and there is no career that you can't find within this industry. All right, before, um, before we end it, I yep. want to remind people we have Susan Carpenter on the right, yep. president of RBWA, Jessica Ryder, managing director. Talk about the Career Path Highway. Yeah, so the RV Career Highway is something that we found just from talking with members, talking with the industry, um, that is lacking. When you come into the industry, um, if you've never heard of an RV, if you've never even like seen an RV or understand what it is, there's a lot of The things. exhibit wall will be closing <laughs> in just a few minutes, so if you would be please curious and find your way to the exit, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for attending and being an exhibitor this year at RVDA. <laughs> I'm I'm going to leave that in the show. They they may decide to cut it out, but I'm going to leave it in that. So the crew, the crew highway is what we came up with to help anybody that's coming into the industry navigate their way through some of those nuances that they're not going to know when they first jump in. You know, the basic things. Everybody uses the term OEM. What does that mean? Everybody, you know, some people don't understand what the difference between an aftermarket supplier is and a supplier is. There's many different little nuances within the within the industry that, that if you're not from here, you don't understand it, you're not gonna you're not gonna get taught that. The RV Career Highway is to help you come into the industry, help you learn those basic nuances so that you can navigate your career and grow within the industry. And it's a job sport, so yep. you can find a job there as well. All right, so this is day one of the convention. You got two more days, you got a nice display booth. You'll be talking to veterans of the industry, yes. executives, and tell them all about the RV Women's Alliance. Yes. That's right. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you, Bob. Bob. Mike here from RV Blogger. Don't waste hundreds of dollars on an external GPS for your RV. All you need to do is download the RV Life app right onto your phone 
This app is so cool. It has RV GPS built right into it. So you can load all the specific measurements and weights for your RV. It'll give you directions safe for your RV to follow. And by the way, if you have RV Trip Wizard, directions for your trips upload into this GPS automatically. Hey everybody, it's John DePietro and welcome back to the Camp Report Show. And you know, in the last year or so that we've been doing this particular show, I've had the opportunity to meet so many different people, not only in the RVing aspect of travel, but in the overall generic aspect of travel. And you'd have to be um, locked under a rock somewhere in the state of New Jersey if you are not aware of the vast differences in the fortunes of the RV side of travel and the hotel, motel, car rental, airline, convention business, which is another side of travel. And with that being said, we have a guest with us who is, I think, you know what, I'm not a big English guy, but to say prolific, in terms of writing would probably be the uh, best way to describe his um, words that are everywhere, at least in the Washington Post, USA Today, and Forbes as the three biggies. Let's welcome Christopher Elliott. Do you want me to call you Chris or Christopher, sir? Chris is good. Chris is good. Okay. So welcome to the Camp Report Show. Thanks. Can I ask you a question? Sure can. What is your background? That is a campground. My background is a campground, and I believe that is in Myrtle. That is in Myrtle Beach. I've been I thought I place. recognized it. Yeah, such a and beautiful part of the country. It absolutely is, and you know what? Myrtle Beach is um, got so many campgrounds. This particular one has about one thousand five hundred sites, and um, wow. there's several of those. That's up in the northern part of what they call the Grand Strand, and I'm sure that you've probably done uh, stories on um, that that whole area of Myrtle, which is kind of- I have, fun. yeah, yeah, it's great. It's one of our favorites. We like going, we actually uh, did some kite flying there the last time. Ah. We were, because they have a nice breeze that comes they in do. off the ocean and they do. you can fly they kites do. there. I call it the uh, neon t-shirt and fried food capital of the Eastern part <laughs> of the United States. But they have some good health food stores there too. Um, they have a fresh market that we like to go to. Yeah, and you know what? Is that the one that is right near in the old Air Force Base? I think so, yeah, think so. it's yeah. relatively new. They have very good like prepared food and fresh baked bread, just all the things you're not supposed to eat. Right, <laughs> exactly. But you know what? Um, talk about your background as a travel writer. I mean, you've been everywhere. I mean, you were born in Charlotte, you grew up in, in Austria, then you, you went to the other side of the United States over in Berkeley and uh, you reside on the West Coast now, I believe. But uh, talk a little bit about your background because every time we get a, a guest who's had international experience, we get so many comments from our, our uh, viewers that say, you know, tell me how they got to where they're at. I have no idea how I got to where I'm at. <laughs> You're supposed to say when I was a little kid, I had this, I had this inkling that I was doodling and I wanted to be a, you know, a cartoonist. Yes. And when uh, I was a young boy, many eons ago, uh, you know, I think that I kind of fell into travel writing. Um, I'm sure people have said that before, but my parents were um, in the ministry okay. when I was growing up. And so we, uh, we moved a lot. And so they lived in Germany and then Austria. It was called really West Germany back then. And then in Austria. Oh, yeah. And then we would come back to the States to do deputation. And then we would go back. So we never really lived in one place for very long. And I think somewhere along the line, the uh, gypsy blood, the nomadic bug bit me. Yep. Something like that happened. I, I like to joke around that I'm part Bedouin. Um, I don't really have a permanent residence. We were talking before we, we did this interview and I am in Uncle Pete's basement right now. And uh, I'm gonna be in another week and a half hitting the road, going down to Idaho and Arizona and California. Um, so I just, you know. Okay, Idaho. Idaho. What's going on there that would uh, bring you there? 
Outside well, it's on the way. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's on, on the, the way. way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it's I have not... been actually been talking to the tourism folks in Idaho for years, and they they keep saying, "Hey, you got to come visit." So it's a good time. Uh, I have a couple of nights free, and I thought I'd go and just. I love skiing. Sun Valley is one of my very favorite ski resorts. So you don't have to twist my arm to go back there. You know what? I'm mixing Iowa up with Idaho. Oh well, let's talk about Iowa because we were there this summer. And well, it actually is a great place. We were there during that Field of Dreams baseball game. Ah, uh, the Yankees. Uh... It was great. They good food. The people were very friendly. Um, the, the towns were clean and they had nice museums. It's really one of those overlooked destinations. Mm. Uh, I, so, I probably would go during the summer. Probably. You're right. Exactly. If you're a nomadic person, as you a self-described nomad, um, have you ever considered doing an RV tour where you could uh, drive where you want or tow where you want? Because if you tow one, then you've got your pickup truck to be able to go where you want. If you go in a motorized RV, you can, um, you know, travel and relax at the same time. You don't have to back it in and, and do all that other stuff. I, I wondered if that, if that um, assignment has ever tickled your fancy. It has. Actually, I've done two RV assignments in my career, um, which is not a lot. I did uh, some RVing when I was in Alaska. This was a long time ago. And then I did another RV assignment in California, in Northern California. And both times, I would say I could really, I could understand what the appeal of having an RV was. But um, I got to be honest with you, it really wasn't for me. I don't think I could live in an RV. Well, um, but you know, for a couple of days, it's pretty fun. I love the flexibility and, um, I, and I would recommend it too, but it's something that you should try. I, I talk to people who say, yeah, my, my retirement goal is to go yep. uh, buy an RV and dri drive Maybe around the United country. States. And so I, I say to them, that's a great idea. Why don't you start by renting one for a couple of days and just seeing if you like it, but don't jump into it, assuming that you will. You know what? You are 100% correct because it's not for everyone. And uh, even if you get one that is the largest one made, which is about 400 square feet, 40 feet wide, excuse me, 40 feet long and, and 10 feet wide, um, consider you and whoever you're with trying to live in 400 square feet in a stick built house. And it gets rather, um, you know, considering the fact that your neighborhood may change every every week or month and your neighbors would change every week, every month. See, now there's all these planning tools. We, we have a friend who is uh, based here in Massachusetts, but is going to um, go out to that, I don't know, the Midwest, but he has this, this program called RV Trip Wizard. And this gentleman has every mile and every minute accounted for. He knows where he's staying for campgrounds. He knows what the cost of gas is in the town he's going to. He knows the traffic on any interstate highway at any particular time. So uh, programs like that, RV Life, RV Trip Wizard, they kind of take the uh, guesswork out of, you know, being a nomad. Um, but- Well, yeah, you know what? That aspect too. I got to tell you the- uh the one thing I could not get over was changing the gray water. Um, <laughs> and if there was a way of around that, I might be much more open to doing. Yeah. Um, so you saw that uh, you saw the Chevy chase or Robin Williams movie with, uh, with, with him doing that. It's very, very important. It's very, it's an important part of our V. That's a very important. Absolutely. Well, well you I, know what, whether it's a small pop-up or whether it's a 40 foot diesel pusher, that's, could sell for up to, you know, over a million dollars. The one thing you have in common is that gray slinky hose that goes from here to there. Mm -hmm. One thing in heaven. Let, let me ask you this question. Um, if you didn't, if you weren't traveling for work, where would your ideal vacation be? And how would you get there? Where would you stay? Uh, give me your ideal vacation when you're on Christopher's time and not on one of the, one of your um, assignments. Oh wow! 
I think it really depends what time of year it is. So if, if you're talking about fall, when this is going to uh, first post, right, like right now. one of my favorite places for fall is central and Northern California. Uh, the weather is very mild and um, you know, it's, it's, uh, there aren't a lot of people there. I love central Europe too and Western Europe during the fall. Uh, September is great. Home. Pardon me? The crowd, the tourist crowds have gone home. The tourists are gone. I know that's the thing that I love. Yep. But I will also say that if you, um, if you can make it all the way out to Hawaii this time of year, uh, the tourists are also, and especially with COVID, are, are also gone. So you have the whole big island to yourself, which is great. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, I don't, I don't mean to give you three different answers, but I could go for well, any of those. Any of those. And, you know, you bring up COVID and we haven't brought it up here too for, but, um, you know, now, like where I live, there's an indoor mask mandate um, that was just put into effect earlier this week. Are there going to be aspects of the travel industry that, that ain't coming back? Uh, let me just be very perfectly blunt. Is the, tra is the cruise industry going to come back to its pre-pandemic levels? Oh, I don't know. I think the cruise industry has a long ways to go before it's back. You have some cruises operating uh, in the Caribbean, mostly in Europe, though. And uh, it's there's some very, very strict requirements now where you have to be tested and you've got to show vaccine proof, all that. Some of the things that, ha that are going to never come back are, I, I think, something that's permanently changes masks. Right now, there's a mask requirement on all mass transit regulated by the Department of Transportation. Yep. Uh, that lasts until January. I think that it's probably going to continue and maybe indefinitely. So we might Trains see a buses. mask requirement that's still in, in effect next summer. Mm. Trains, planes, buses. Trains, planes, buses, especially planes. That's mm. where you, know, you get most people complaining. What, what's your take on Amtrak and the service that they provide and... Um, now that you've got a president that is pro railroad, is Amtrak going to see any growth? Well, I, I hope so. I mean, I'm a big supporter of trains and having grown up in Europe, as you said, oh. uh, I could see mass transit and Look I could see how it, it could work very well if you yeah. support it. Uh, trains are not going to go away. There always will be trains in the United States, at least in our lifetime. The question is, will they be feasible? And I think that they are right now. Uh, I love these new, the, what are they called? The little tube trains that they're experimenting with in Las Vegas. The, um, gosh, uh, the Virgin. Um, oh, see, anyway. I haven't seen that. Yeah, yeah. Well, Virgin's yeah, got it. They have, where it's, it's called the Hyperloop. That's what it is. Um, and and uh, Tesla too. Uh, you know, if you can send one of, if you can send us across the country at 600 miles an hour on one of those Hyperloops, you know, you're going to get a lot of business and it's going to be much, right. it, it probably will be more convenient than getting to the airport, getting screened and all that stuff. So I don't know. I mean, I, I'm a big supporter of trains and I'm grateful that we now have a president who does support trains. Mm. My presumption is that most of your assignments are determined by you. Is that, is that right? Or yeah, it varies, but I do have a lot of flexibility about where I go. Yep. So one that you got sent to, and you said, uh, oh, this is not where I want to go, but it turned out to be real cool. Oh, I remember my trip to Poland. I got sent there. And um, half my family is actually from Poland and Ukraine, and I did not want to go. I'd heard stories about it just being drab and Desolate. the food is yep. terrible. I went and I loved it. Poland is great. You know, Krakow, Warsaw, we went through the countryside. Uh, I would do that again in a heartbeat. Friendly people. Friendly people. Yeah, they like Americans. Good. Perfect. Christopher Elliott has been our guest here on the Travel Report Show. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that you'll find out is in order to really figure out your best destinations, read his column, read the publications that he's in, such as Washington Post, USA Today, Forbes. You've also got Elliott Advocacy, where you help out people that may have traveled somewhere and are stuck there. Tell us a little bit about that before we close. Yeah, oh, I'm glad you asked me about that because if your uh, viewers are having a problem with any consumer product, not just travel, but we do happen to specialize in travel. So if you've had a problem with a campsite or you have road service that didn't work out quite right, or you've got um, a lemon of an RV 
we will help you. We have a staff of advocates. Our help is free. You can go to Elliot.org. That's E-L-L-I-O-T-T dot O-R-G. Elliot.org forward slash help will get you to a form. If you fill that form out, uh, we'll get right back to you and we'll help you. We can often negotiate refunds or at least apologies for you. So we'll help if we can. Great. Perfect. Hey, everybody. This is the Camp Report Show. My name is John DePietro. His name is Christopher Elliott.